When the world looks at kosher, they usually say, oh, blessed by a rabbi, but there's so much more to it. If someone put a piece of pork, pork chops and say, oh, make it kosher, just bless it. You can't be like, boom. Yeah, no way, it's not happening. Hey guys, my name is Kieran Deal. I am a stand-up comedian, so I am constantly looking for ways to fill up the emptiness inside. And I figure what better way to do that than with food and spirituality. Welcome to Soul Food, where the spirit meets the belly. Los Angeles, there is no better place to start than Pico and Robertson, also known as the Kosher Corridor. Now, I grew up in Boca Raton, Florida, with like lots of friends who were Jewish, but basically my understanding of kosher has always been like matzo balls and gefilte fish. I never really knew the specifics or how this culture that's thousands of years old translates into modern day. To get my bearings, I'm gonna learn the kosher basics. I'm here at Western Kosher, which is the largest emporium of kosher products on the West Coast. Michal. Michal. How am I doing? Michal. You gotta get the ch. Like l'chaim. You gotta get the ch. It's the ch. Okay, so you have a kosher butcher on site. Is it possible for you to take me kind of behind the scenes and show me how stuff works? For sure. This butcher. is where we butcher all of our meat. I'm gonna give you a, a coat to wear. This is Moshe Kagan. He's our butcher. Hi, Moshe. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm always checking out the meat. Yeah. You got. So, that's what you gotta do. Oh, we get matching hairnets, you and me. We do not allow protruding hair. Sounds like a lot of my life, you know? <laughs> protruding hair. Yeah, that's what it is to be an Indian person. Yeah. Remember, we gotta keep this kosher. Tell me a little bit about what we're looking at. Almost everything here has been fabricated in this facility. We also keep all the types of meat separate. Lamb and goat, chicken in particular, or poultry, is not used on the same equipment. You'll notice, all poultry trays are coated yellow. Fish trays are coated blue. What makes the meat kosher? It has to be the right kind of animal. A camel, a hare, a pork is not kosher. Every kosher animal has to have two signs of kosher. Number one sign, a ruminating stomach. Number two sign, it has to have what's called a split hoof, which means lambs, goats, deer, Cows, all those animals are designated as kosher animals. So they're all great to eat. And chickens and fish are also well, allowed. Well, that's a different category. Oh, it's a different category altogether. Altogether. Every fish that has a scale also has fins. But not all fish that have fins have scales. It's so confusing. No, it's very simple. If a fish has fins and scales, it's kosher. So that's like a salmon. Two signs. Like a salmon, correct, or a fillet of sole. But not the Tilapia. catfish. Not a catfish. It has fins but no scales. You remind me of the professor from Jurassic Park. I don't know who he was. He was very no. good. <laughs> the next stage about that we have to deal with as far as kosher, it needs particular processing. We can't take an animal and kill it with a stick knife no. as you can with a pork. You can't stick it, you have no. to cut. It has to be a particular cut in a particular place with a particular tool. Why the reason is, because it's supposed to be 100% painless. So tell me, what does glatt kosher mean? To give it to you in a simple language or terminology, we're just gonna call it super kosher. Super kosher. As it's opposed like to generally kosher. These are like the superheroes of kosher. I wouldn't call them word heroes. It's nothing to do with that. Well, thank you for sharing all your knowledge. Can you tell me where to go find Michael? I don't know who Michael is. Michael. Oh, I think he's out the, out the door and I'll get him for you okay, on the perfect. right. Thank you. We're standing right here by the meat showcase, actually. This is the longest kosher meat showcase on the West Coast. As you can see, it's pretty empty right now. On a Friday afternoon, we got busy earlier today. Is that because of the Shabbat dinner the Shabbat this Shabbat is coming, so everybody's, everybody's shopping. And what is Shabbat? Just Shabbat to... is Hebrew for Sabbath. It begins sundown Friday, and it ends on sundown Saturday night. And what does it entail? So our holy day of Shabbat, Basically, we do a Thanksgiving-style dinner every Friday night, and, um, and that's it. So let that me show you quickly delicious. around the rest yeah. of the store. This is our dairy section. 
So meat and dairy are kept separately. And why? Why is that? That all comes from the Torah, from the Bible. It comes from one phrase which says, don't cook a kid in its mother's milk. So never to cook a baby goat in its mother's milk. It's all from one it's phrase? It's all from one phrase. It was mentioned three times in the Torah, and then the entire kosher law comes from that one. Out of that one thing. This is our takeout food section. What do you recommend? What should I try if I'm going to try something? Well, a real Jewish food is chopped liver. This is going to be my first time eating liver. Yum. Yum. It doesn't get more Jewish than that. Uh-uh-uh. What do you think? Yeah, we get that a lot. Mm. Well, this was terrific. We got the full 9-9 nine nine and everything, which was awesome. I tell you what, tonight is our Sabbath, this Shabbat. Why don't you come over for dinner? Yeah? And then you'll get to experience it live and in color. Yeah, I would love that. That'd be awesome. Can I bring a bottle of wine? Sure. We have a great wine selection right over here. Come on, follow me. Great. favorite. I'm Kieran. Nice to meet you. I'm Joseph Herzog, part of the Herzog family. We represent 80% of the uh, kosher wine business. Oh, amazing. Yep. So kosher wines, how are they different than regular wines? Great question. In theory, basically, they're not. They're made the same way. People think about kosher wine as being sweet, syrupy, manashevitz. It's not true any longer. Wherever great wine is produced, our philosophy is we go and produce great kosher wine over there. The absolute <laughs> finest, best wines. I buy nothing but that. But tell me, is wine still, when you drink wine today, is it still sweet, syrupy wines, or is it great high-end wines? It's high-end. That's it. This the looks sweet, like it was a thing planted. Of the past. No, it wasn't planted. The rabbi just was, walked in. It doesn't in. come around enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely magnificent wine. Rabbi, don't worry. If I don't come to you, I don't go anywhere else. Does he really know what he's talking about with the wine? We actually, we're the only religion that we're required to drink. Yeah. Come Sabbath, come in, we are required That's to drink. Everything thing. is over a cup of wine and we drink. Yes. A wedding, every ceremony, everything is done over a glass of wine. Which one would you recommend that I take for a Shabbat dinner? I would definitely go, it's either going to be a dry white or more prefer a dry red. Great bottle over here from Spain. There's the wine stuck over here. If you want something that's slightly different, Herzog Alexander Valley, great bottle of wine. And then uh, Israeli wine, of course. So much wine, so little time. Now that I have got the basics of kosher down, I am ready for something to eat. Angelinos absolutely cannot live without their tacos. So someone's figured out a way to make it kosher. Since I'm the owner of Mexico, sure, but I'm not Jewish, yeah. I have to call this guy every time that I have to open my restaurant because he has the yeah. key. Why do you have he, the key? Long story short, I'm scared that anyone could come in and just like spray pork juice everywhere. It's a religious reason. It's a religious thing. Cool, so yeah. you open it. Yeah, yeah. so it's like I own my restaurant, but I don't have access to my own restaurant. Fun. Okay, great. What's your official title? So my official title is Mashkiach. Mashkiach. Yeah. Okay. My job is to just make sure this place is kosher. He does the Mexi, I do the kosher. This restaurant, we take our level of kosher way beyond the kosher standards. Everything should be cooked by a Jew. He is the one who lights the fire. Exactly. I read about this. So you have to light the fire. Yeah. So, so that it's technically cooked by you. Yeah, I just make sure everything's kosher. I wash the vegetables, I, I like the pilot light if it goes out. I make sure whenever he brings in, or anyone brings in meat or any products that are processed, I make sure that it has a hexure. And you're like, like I want this it's place. Like, it's like having the health department in your restaurant exactly. 24 seven. In Jewish law, one of the biggest things in kashrus, which is the word for kosher, is meat. There's a bunch of these tape seals on everything that has meat or fish in it. We want to make sure no one can get to it because it's the biggest thing in kashrus that could be contaminated. Vegetables, essentially, we don't worry about them being contaminated, but things like the cilantro over here and also there's cilantro in the peak of the gallo, I have to wash it in a certain way because there's actually bugs in there. Not eating bugs isn't a gross factor, it's a, it's a kosher factor, meaning bugs aren't kosher. So I'll show you. This is where we wash the vegetables. Yeah, so this is like a prime area for bugs. I remember one time I grabbed the whole thing of cilantro and I found a big fat green, green worm in there. There's gonna be a lot of water involved, and believe it or not, soap, because in kashrus, a lot of times you use either soap or a veggie rinse to get the bugs off. I've never been so paranoid about bugs in my, in my greens. 
This is gonna be the, water, uh, the rack I run the water through, so I really wanna make sure that there's nothing on it. Like, if there's a bug on here, then there may not be a bug in there, but it's kinda just like shooting myself in the foot. And as you can see, like, everything that would be in there would be getting caught in the napkin itself. This is my white light check. Uh, what the loop helps me to do is uh, if I see anything that could possibly look like a bug, I could just kind of go in there like that. It's like a magnifying glass. Jewelers use it when they're checking out diamonds. I use it to check out if there's bugs. This one's actually looking pretty good. I don't see anything. I don't see any bugs. It's Woo! It's not nearly as tasty as the carnitas, but... Um, oh, we can eat some. We can eat some cilantro. Thank you. Baruch atah adonai ahinu mecha olam brei well, prayer. This has been awesome. I've learned so much about how to be kosher. Whoa, I had no idea that cilantro could have so many bugs in it, or that that was such an intense and long process. Guys, I'm ready for a drink. I'm lucky I got a seat today. Yeah, well, it's Friday, so we're not open. Shabbat's coming. Well, I read about you guys on the interwaves, and it sounded like a really cool melding of kind of the kosher tradition, because you do all kosher foods with like a modern day take. Well, we're just a contemporary American restaurant that just so happens to be kosher. When I built this restaurant, just do good, honest food that we would eat at any non-kosher regular restaurant. Uh -huh. and to showcase that kosher is delicious. You ready for a cocktail? I am ready for a cocktail. Okay, so see when people think of kosher cocktails, they don't really think of really delicious, um, farm to table, fruits. whatever, any fruits. So this is just, you know, pineapple is looking really good, fresh mint. I'm gonna take a little bit of agave. Here I have a little bit of saffron syrup, some fresh lime juice that we just squeezed. Shibos. All right, so shivas. So this shivas. is the best part. Generous pour. It's Friday. Why not? Yeah. Good try. Awesome. We gotta get you a fresh mint. Hold on one second. Clap on it. It opens up all the little bit of the oils. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Shabbat. Happy Shabbat. Or as we First say, Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I just made Good that. Shabbos. I made that so Indian. I like did a head bobble. Oh, it's good. What do you think? That's great. You like that? Yeah, it's lovely. You can't it's really, really taste fresh. the sugar, right? Yeah, I can't taste the whiskey at yeah, all. Yeah, for a lot of people I that... I could down this in a gulp. Well, we're going to try to go cook some uh, bacon this and eggs. Terrific. Thanks, Alex. This You're is welcome. great. You're welcome. Let's go to the kitchen. When I to cook, I like to have fun. There's all kinds of different things. Yeah. You know, interpretations of dishes. And then I was thinking about, you know, uh, bacon and eggs. But the pig is obviously... Pork is not kosher. Right. But so what we were playing with is lamb belly. What we did was cure it and smoke it like you would uh, regular bacon, but it's made from lamb, so it's lamb bacon. This right here is also pretty cool. I'm using beef fat or schmaltz. Flip over our lamb bacon here so it doesn't burn. Flip over our little bread. I have a little pretzel bun that we made in-house. So we make our own sriracha. Gonna put our toast down, take the lamb bacon right on top. Then I have an aioli, put that right on top. Grab our fried egg, soft and runny on the inside. Nice and crunchy edges like that. We take our extra large pepper grinder, size matters. And a little garnish, chives, parsley. I say your grandma's matzo ball soup. It's fun, huh? Ready to try this? You want to go sit down yes. over there and eat yes. it? Yes. Come on, let's go. Yeah, just try the bacon and the eggs. Tell me what you think. Very good. Is that bacon good? Very good. It does taste like bacon. But better because it's, it it's it, got gaminess. There's a crunchiness to it. Like the thing I love about bacon how crispy it is. I was skeptical, I'm not gonna lie. I kept it in my heart. I'm glad Cheers. you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's great. And uh, come back, eat. Oh, that kosher bacon hit the spot. Now that I have a drink in me, I think I'm ready to go and meet the family. Hi! Hey, welcome! Thank Perfect you for timing. having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. We gotta give you the full experience. I know, I'm excited. So, I got some Kosher. Kosher wine, kosher awesome. Kosher wines. From the best kosher store in LA. <laughs> yes. All right, well the women are lighting the candles, getting ready for the Sabbath now, so come on okay, in. Okay, cool. So tonight is called a Shabbos dinner. Shabbos dinner. And we have our whole family gathers together. Well, the great grandmother's 99 years old. I know. So there you go. Looking good. We should all live that long. Looking sprightly. Well, let me know. Can I help with anything? Can I? Sure. Yeah. 
But let's go bring the fish to the table. This is actually three gefilte fish rolls combined in one. Uh huh. That looks very beautiful. Thank you. Don't want to drop it. Or else I'm going to be in trouble with Grandma. So what's next? We, do what's we start with the fish or do we the start with the well, bread? first we have to say the Kiddush. Kiddush is blessing the wine. That is the traditional sanctification of the Sabbath. And why do you fill the cup all the way to the top? We fill the cup to the top and we actually let it overflow. It's a symbol of abundance and it's a blessing for prosperity. So the bread actually remains covered as to not embarrass the bread while we say the blessing over the wine. We uncover it once we're done with the Kiddush. All right, join us in the kitchen where we're going to wash our hands. So we wash our hands for bread and that removes all the spiritual impurity off our hands. We don't usually talk between saying the blessing on washing the hands. When we eat the bread, we'll, we can speak again. All right, now let's eat. Let's start with the first course, which is fish. Mm, very good. So on a normal dinner like this one, do you guys, what do you guys talk about? You talk about school? You... We don't like to talk about business. So like your family and... We speak about family and... So one night during the week that we all get to sit together. No cell phones. No TV, no, no videos, no iPads, nothing electronic. Outside world is outside. But as soon as it's over, everyone goes to pick up the phone. <laughs> now since we separate the fish and the meat, we'll actually clear away our fish plates and our fish forks and have a nice clean plate for dinner. So here we have, these are our dairy dishes. We have signs in English, Hebrew, um, Yiddish, with, um, so we know this whole side is For dairy. dairy. So this is parav, so what's parav mean? It means like in between milk and meat, like fish. Parv means neutral. It's neither dairy nor meat. A lot of homes have two dishwashers if you have a big enough kitchen. So here, because my mother-in-law just has the one dishwasher, she uses it only for meat dishes. Oh, and then she'll wash the other ones by hand. And then she washes the dairy by hand. So we have two ovens, one's for dairy, one's for meat. We're gonna pull out the main course, this beautiful piece of meat that we made. With kosher, we actually, there was a famous fight in the Bible between Jacob and the angel. The angel actually struck Jacob on his thigh. There's a vein called the sinew in the thigh, which we don't eat or we have to remove it. And in the United States, the rabbis are a little weary of removing that bone. So basically from the last rib all the way down to the back half of the cow is considered the non-kosher part of the cow. We can't eat any um, sirloin, with filet mignon, nothing from the back of the cow. So the prime rib is our, is our prime rib. What a spread of food. The truth is, well, no, you gotta like him. That is terrific meat. It's so juicy. It's like um, some of the best meat I've had. Thank you. Yeah. And now we toast everybody. Lechayim. Say Lechayim. Lechayim. It's been a pleasure having you here at our mock Shabbos dinner. And now that the sun is going down, we're gonna actually get off to the synagogue and do this for real. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Okay, I just finished my first Shabbat dinner with Mikhail's family. It was incredible. They were so warm. As you can see, the sun's setting now, so they have to go. We have to go because of our cameras. They can't have cameras during their real Shabbat dinner. Uh, but I have to say, nothing fills up the emptiness like beef brisket and family. Thank you.